Impacts of humans and natural disasters in ecosystems. So there are many ways that humans and natural disasters can impact the world around us. Um, one way is when there's the removal of all biotic life. And that could be removal with clear cutting, fire, tornado, or volcano. There's many other examples of that too. So when we have recovery from this, there's two different ways ecosystems can recover. The first is primary succession. And that occurs when the ecosystem lacks soil and vegetation. So first we're going to have pioneer species. Um, and they're going to create soil and provide nutrients upon their death, whenever they decompose, for greater organisms to move in. In secondary succession, we have soil remaining. So it has soil and maybe plants. So not all life is gone. This is much faster than primary succession. So the ecosystem can get back on its feet faster. So smaller plants will invade. And larger ones will come in time. So one common thing that people look at is volcanoes. After a volcano will come, the primary succession will probably happen because you just have lava rocks. So lichen and other species similar to that can grow just on the rock and they can break the rock apart, create soil nutrients for grasses and smaller organisms to come in. Secondary succession is more like the tornadoes where all of the ground is really roughed up. There isn't probably many big trees and stuff like that. However, there is biotic life present so that, you know, the ecosystem doesn't have to start from bare rock. It has some soil, so things can occur faster. So another issue that impacts the ecosystems is toxins in the ecosystem. So toxins can accumulate in the lower food chain because a lot of time toxins get absorbed by the plants in which the animals will eat the plants so a lot of the primary um, consumers and our producers are going to be affected firsthand however this concentration is not always harmful. However, what really um, is bad is in the tertiary species or higher up consumers, this toxin will concentrate 
because the pocket toxins being eaten um, by the tertiary consumers through all the other secondary and primary that it's eating. So it's going to get a lot more than they did. And this can kill or harm a species or population. Another thing that happens a lot um, is overhunting. And there's a lot of things to prevent that nowadays, but overhunting can endanger populations. And overhunting can upset the balance, therefore, of the matter cycle. Some things may not have as much prey if they previously hunted whatever's being overhunted. And things that had that species as its predator will no longer be um, eaten as often, so they might have a greater rise in their population, which can cause issues. And lastly, we're going to look at pollution. So we all talk about pollution and hear about it. And one of the main stories that you hear in biology classes about pollution is the pepper moth story. And that's during the uh, Industrial Revolution. The pollution, which was soot, coated the trees and it resulted in a change in the ratio of phenotypes or colors of this pepper moth. The lighter moths that before the revolution were well hidden on the trees now stuck out more because the trees became darker. The darker ones therefore blended in more. So the population of dark pepper moths rose where light pepper moths were being eaten easily. So that decreased and that's how that was affected. So these are many ways that humans and natural disasters can impact our ecosystems.